Hi, this is Vince Roman from Burton Stainless with another episode of Vince in Shorts. And this time I brought a friend. This is Fernando. Fernando's been working for us for, gosh, nearly 20 years, I would, I would guess. And um, what we're going to do here today is I want to show everybody how to make a two-in-one merch collector. So um, with this, I'm just going to go turn it over to Fernando, and I'll just be kind of talking through the process as he is uh, going through the different steps. The first step of the process is to apply blue die chem onto the part so that when you score the marks that you'll be cutting to, that you can easily see them. Merge bends have a four inch and a five inch leg. The four inch leg is the clamp leg and the five inch leg is the pull off side. It's important that you set up the collector to use the clamp end as the inlet to the collector Otherwise, you may get a distorted slip. Also, the longer end of the merge bend is needed if you're going to go down to an especially small collector outlet. The next step of the process is to score the cut line. The actual position of the cut line depends on the gap between the inlets. In this case, we are going to set up this collector with a eighth inch gap between the tubes because once the inlets are expanded with the 65,000 material, the inlets will just be barely touching each other. Um, the reason we use a hundred thousandths versus a uh, 16th wedge is because there is shrinkage that occurs when you weld the collectors together. After scoring the line, Fernando is taking the collector tube over to the vertical band saw in order to make the initial cut. As you can see, he first puts in a couple of starter cuts at the beginning of the line and then runs the tube all the way through the band saw. This is a very dangerous step, probably the most dangerous in this process, so please be careful. And you will notice that Fernando does not cut exactly on the score line. Uh, Fernando will now cuts all the way to the score line that we did earlier. On the grinding wheel, so it's really important at this step to, is to grind all the way up to the line, but also after you've taken the two bends and cut them, that you actually set them up so that there is no gap between the lines. Next step is to deburr the cuts and again just make clear the debris in order to get a nice clean weld. Next step of course is welding. So the welders will take the two tubes and will fit them together. He actually uses a shim to keep the bottom of the collector separated and then takes a piece of tubing or in this case he's using a flange in order to close the gap on the collector in order to get it tacked up. It's usually best to get the top tacked up first and then place a few tacks down um, each side of the collector. After the collector has been tacked, it's time to do the welding. One of the most critical points in welding a collector is going to be to use a good back purge. Actually, not just for collectors, but anytime you're welding stainless steel. At the end of the collector, um, you can see that the welder is placing some aluminum foil into the end of the collector in order to block passage of the gas from there. Um, you can see the apparatus that we use, uh, just a couple of silicone plugs, one with a hole in it, one with a hole with a hose that goes through that carries the purge gas. Um, and then he will take the TIG torch and run the welds on both sides of the collectors. The next step is to cut the collector for the inlet and the outlet. On the outlet, you'll see what Fernando is doing is taking a piece of tubing and placing it down the end of the collector. Um, in this case, we are wanting to make this a three inch outlet tube. So that's a three inch tube. He sets it down and he places a mark with his Sharpie at that location. We will not cut it there. We will actually add one quarter of an inch to that position and score using the height gauge at that point and make the 
cut there. On the inlet side, we usually will put two inch slips on our collectors and we have a quarter inch lead in or a quarter inch gap uh, between the start of the bend and the slip. So we want the leg lengths on the inlet side of the collector to be 2.25 inches. Again, Fernando is using the height gauge in order to score the cut line on the inlet side of the collector. To make these cuts, we could use the vertical bandsaw or the horizontal bandsaw or even a cold saw. In this case, Fernando is going to use the horizontal bandsaw to make the cuts. Usually works pretty well. As you'll notice, the outlet of the collector is not round. It ends up being an oval shape. So now this next step is to make the end of the collector round. And the way that we do it is using a hydraulic press. We have tooling that's made that will actually be inserted into the outlet end of the collector and pushed into the collector uh, with the ram and form that round outlet. This is probably the piece of equipment that most people may not have at home to do this. Next, we'll be expanding the inlets so that they slip over a primary pipe. Fernando is using a finger expander. This is a very old pen bend pack uh, machine that we have that uh, Jack ha has had for many, many years. And it's just kind of one of those favorite tools that we have in the shop. You'll see at this point that Fernando is actually putting a lot of body English into the collector. And one of the things that he's trying to do there is that the inlets of the collector uh, ended up being a little bit um, out of parallel um, following the welding because of the distortion. So in at this point here, you can actually, um, by cleverly moving the collector and manipulating the expander, you can actually get those to come out parallel. You'll see that Fernando has a sample tube that he is using to make sure that the inlet slips are properly sized. Now that the collector outlet is larger, Fernando can go back into the collector and do some final polishing. One of the hallmarks of a Burns Merge Collector is the polished inside. This is a two-step process where Fernando will take a uh, standing drum, I believe it's a 36 grit sanding drum and we'll go in and polish the collectors. Uh, we want to go in there and we want to give a nice even polish all the way through the collector. We want to make sure that the seams in between the bends are very crisp and clean and then following that process you will go th back through with a finer uh, flap wheel and just put a nice finish on the inside of the collector and then he'll take it over to the uh, belt sander and make sure that the edges are deburred and everything is clean before the next step. You can see that Fernando is here using the flap wheel in order just to blend the inside uh, grind marks and end up with a nice beautiful collector inside. Now is time to fine tune the collector. Uh, Fernando has taken a piece of a three inch tubing and is looking at the outlet of the collector, making sure that it's a nice even fit. If the collector is out around, which it always will be, uh, Fernando takes a hammer and gently taps the collector in at the places in order to make it round and to make it the right size. So, at the end of 11 and a half minutes, you have a beautiful collector with a nice interior that has been polished, the exit been uh, checked for roundness, and the inlet slips checked for uh, proper uh, slipment. So that's what it takes to build a two-into-one collector. And I'd be curious to know what you thought of this video and if you'd like us to make more videos like this. So until next time, this is Vince from Burn Stainless and Vince in Shorts. Take care.